Yo, what up? Welcome to the Binge Eater Podcast. Your boy, me, a man. I'm here with Big Lynch holding it down. And we got Woody. Woody's Must be a gamer tag. Big day for you to have the third funniest host from PKA right here on the show. Fourth, if you count wings. Yeah, well, I do, first of all. Uh, but if you second, count lefty, he's still fourth. So <laughs> you are the most you are the most elusive, though. Your number was gate kept to me. Who gave like, you my number? How did you get a hold of me? <laughs> I'll never tell. I'll never tell. But it's uh it's great having you on this podcast, but I need you to know that you still owe me like 18 more. Okay. <laughs> those, those listening, I'm sure literally 99% of the people listening listen to PKA, uh, but I've just been on uh, Woody, Kyle, and Taylor's podcast a billion times, and uh, now that we're doing it, you guys, maybe you weren't the first PKA guy for mm-hmm. no reason other than I didn't have your number. I only had Kyle's number, so and then Taylor's number was easier to get. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is, uh, I, I completely lost track of what I was even ranting, rum, rambling on about. What was I talking about? You're saying he owes, he owes you, is what, you, what you're trying to He get owes me here. money, right? This fucking guy owes me cash. He owes me cash. He owes Wings cash. <laughs> yeah, Lynch, I was on the other podcast and Wings. He didn't actually say that you owed him money. He but, didn't? Uh, I totally believed you. No, no, he, he said that, like, there was Wait. an issue with money. He didn't get paid. Enough, and there was uh, some. Dude, I have paid so many people who I don't even owe just because early on I figured out that like your reputation is incredibly important in YouTube. And anyone who even claimed they like people would do a service for me that I never hired them for and then hand me a bill. And they'd be like, look, I made this fucking thing for Woody and and now he owes me. And I'd be like, well, fuck, I I guess I do. And I pay people (laughs) that I never met or talked to. Oh my Just God, to- I should have been invoicing for every podcast. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and just an amount that you'd be like, fine, I'll pay it like 75 bucks. You're like, fuck, all right. <laughs> you'd be like, Taylor, Kyle, throw in Kyle's like, I'm not giving anything to that. Do you You're like, all right, podcasts Taylor. pay for guests? Like yes. the show Rogan Lynch, pay for Lynch, guests? Lynch has spoken to me extensively about this because he, he found this pretty fascinating when the whole, uh, the rap world was mm-hmm. basically like our presence on the show is worth it for you even if you're getting a million views that's even more worth it then but what what was it lynch what, what was the numbers going around and stuff no there's like uh some interview style sort of like hip-hop podcast they pay for recurring guests because you know like there's one very popular called vlad tv mm-hmm. and he does like it's not really a podcast but kind of it's just an interview essentially they sit down and talk about like topical stuff and he has recurring guests and he's paying them like I mean, he chops everything up and is probably making a ton of money. You know, it's behind a paywall, then it's released, and he deletes, releases like 50 clips with it. But mm-hmm. you're saying he's paying like 20, 30, 50K or something like that for some of his recurring guests. And I was like, that's makes sense. He's probably making a lot more than that on these interviews. Yeah, they do does. like the one podcast and then bang out a billion clips. And it's funny. I saw, I followed someone who did like clips for PKA for a mm-hmm. while, and they had posted at one point that they made and they were like, oh, I'm done doing the clips. It was fun and everything, but I'm done with it now. And they showed how much their channel made. And it was 300 K. Really? Yeah. I didn't yeah. get any of that. I, we No, but you, but it, it, it helps you, I think, because we've spoke about, we would like to get uh, people putting clips out for us. Cause for me, a ton of PKA clips come around, you know what I mean? So I think it, it does help. And I mean, we've seen it, the, for all these like podcasts that have like you know four white dudes being like bitches are stupid and sluts they <laughs> always have a billion clips going around everywhere so it's got to be like a youtube mm-hmm. culture thing also because you know it's not like we you did a, how many collabs have we done you never were like oh you got to either pay me or i'm going to pay you to be in the video it was never that was never the culture of it when you're making just YouTube videos. I uh, did a collab with someone once and they they brought their talents. I the 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 clout of the channel was at its peak for Ep- Epic Meal Time. So like I was bringing the the clout of the channel and they had a channel, but they had, they were a very talented person. And they put their talents towards making an epic meal uh with us and like we were like cool and like you know I was like, "Oh, is there a cut?" and they were like, "Oh, soon, soon, you know." And it never happened. And then I was on another set with that person and another YouTuber. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when it was done, that other YouTuber paid the guy. I saw him give him a check. It was like 3500 bucks. And I was there and I was like, oh, am I am I supposed to supposed to pay 
well, we never said, and I, I like, I've worked with a lot of other channels, and it was like a trade off, like you know, a blast. Mm -hmm. um, some some people blow up from a big push from a channel that's popping at the time. Um, so it was kind of that was always how it was. But then this happened, and I was like, oh, how many others were there, or was there ever like if, if this guy was special though, he had quite the talent that he was putting into it. What, um, what do you, has anyone? asked to be paid or, or when you've reached out to guests and been like, well, can I get this or requested something in, a, in an exchange? Not that I know of. Um, mm. We did one time, it was Chris Hansen. He had a oh, Patreon yeah. level where he'd like talk to you for an hour or something like that for $500. Yeah. So I, I just did it. I was like, what the fuck? I don't Whatever, know. How yeah, fuck it. So um, the idea was we'd get Chris Hansen on the show. Anyway, unrelated to that, Chiz booked him for free. And I'm like, so did we like get in or not? I don't know. <laughs> That's the closest we've come to to paying someone. So he had a I guess he was trying to fire up a new show or something. He went broke. He, he did he, he did fire up a, a show years ago. Right there. Yeah, yeah. He, he's back. He's like, he has that crime he I saw him on Crime. You ever watch Crime Watch Daily? Like I saw all the time. I get caught up and he was in one like the other day and I was like, Oh, I think he's involved in that channel, which do you watch that stuff ever, Woody? Like uh, crime stuff on YouTube, like things like uh, not the um, dramatic crime stuff. I sometimes watch Police Activity, which is you know just highlights like that old cops TV show. People getting taken down, good shootings, bad shootings, rowdy people, situations that go from zero to a hundred in no time at all. Police Activity is pretty cool. Yeah, I do. I I like watching that. Like uh, something about someone doing some shit, and they're like kids are there. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm a, I like interrogation, I lean more towards interrogation. But if it's like oh. police moment out there, then I like to see a cop busting a cop with a cop like, come on, really, dude, turn off the body cam. <laughs> uh, I like that. Or I like someone who's like freaking that. out with their their kids. And I'm like, oh, not in front of the children. I can't watch this. And my algorithm's like, you want more? And I'm like, keep it coming, buddy. Uh, keep uh, it fucking coming. <laughs> dude, the algorithm's crazy. I watched them. Um, we talked before the show about my fish tank. So YouTube has figured out that I keep saltwater fish, like a reef tank. And it just feeds so much fish content to me. I'm always watching it. It reminds me of the gaming community back in like 2012 because a lot of fish YouTubers are awful. They're terrible. <laughs> they, the camera, they have no idea what to say. They just kind of heck and wing it and, and like babble on. They repeat themselves. They'll talk and then they'll say, well, I'll talk more about that later. And it's like, no, no, fuck it. We're, we're three and a half minutes into the video. About what <laughs> That's the title so says. funny. This sucks. And, <laughs> and, and, and then, oh, there's also like, um, and this happens in gaming, this like inverse sort of skill popularity curve. So there'll be like, I don't know, a hot chick or something with a reef tank who's wildly popular. But some other guy who has a PhD in ichthyology, I forget what studying fish is. And, uh, and no one watches that clown because he's not funny or hot or sexy <laughs> or whatever. Tits out. Yeah, it's got to step it up. <laughs> That's so need, funny about... You just want to help with production, man. You got to hit him up. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny about you consuming the fish content and being annoyed because they have the information for fish stuff that you want but it's blocked by their talent level as a youtuber and you can't get past that because you youtube whereas mm -hmm. you wouldn't care about come on this guy's not even looking at the camera write yeah. notes before you film and can we get a light in here? Do you yeah. care about this shit? A little fucking b-roll <laughs> please, right? Yeah. Don't tell me how to pro how to like um Microphone, tune a protein please. skimmer while I'm looking at your face. Show me the bubbles of oh. foaming fish poop. That's no, what yeah, I'm no for. Yeah. Yeah. I think about this a lot. I have a lot of friends who are professionals and obviously mm -hmm. with how much content is like growing and there seems to be like if you're a doctor or a vet or like some type of professional who has a super specific knowledge about something like lawyers. You know, there's some lawyers talking about cases online. There's an avenue to grow an audience because you, you are a subject matter expert. You know, I have mm -hmm. some friends who are like really smart people who know a lot about like, you know, economics or something like that, you know, and I'm like, I should, I should just take the time and sit down with them and just help them make the videos. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we'll find our little community here. And, and especially when it's so specific, like you don't need a huge audience. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you're better off doing that with hot chicks and that are getting them <laughs> to flick their bean on camera. Yeah. Take a cut of that only fans. Yeah. No. Wait, it, do you think he is better? I'm actually torn. Cause like, 
I'm assuming these hot chicks have nothing between their ears, right? So well, what's the yeah, thing? but what's I he gonna do? He's gonna YouTube? he's gonna spend all day with his Jewish lawyer friend and hold the <laughs> camera at him with a ring light. I'd rather yes. take a and shot and fail finished, with the only fans. I'm gonna girl. know what to say to traffic stop. Yeah, well, like, you know, I, like you could you could script it out, Woody. I mean, we could get to we could write the whole thing out. We could hire our buddy to do all the actual <laughs> content and then uh -huh. feed them, feed, give them an earpiece and feed it all through there, or give them a little teleprompter. Now we're cooking. Now we're right, just get an OnlyFans to read off the teleprompter. Get an OnlyFans Poorly. lawyer. <laughs> this could all be one thing. This could all be. This could all end up being the exact same thing. By the way, oh, can you say that word on YouTube? Do you know this? Only this is something that I'm so confused by. Which I, word? I say them all. Oh, like talking about OF on YouTube. Oh, I hear people be like, "Oh, you can't." Like we had this discussion about people saying corn. Like you know, there's some words they always mm -hmm. have to change. Great, dude. And I'm always like confused. You want to know? You want to know? Matter like, or on not, terms of what I, I we know. can say, what we can say, and what we can't say. You want to know what I've noticed? Sure. Over like the last year and a half, two years, is that Philip DeFranco videos never have closed captions. I put closed captions on everything. It's practically automatic. I thought with everything, yeah. I don't know how to not have it. But mm -hmm. Philip DeFranco videos never have closed caption on my TV. I cannot turn it on. I don't know, he's such a guy that always like he he figures shit out down to its oh core. Oh my gosh! And I feel like there must be something to it where he doesn't want it reading what is being said. Wouldn't that be useful for PKA, dude? My last seven videos in a row have been demonetized. <laughs> yeah. So wouldn't that be? Imagine they're just like it's going through the text, and he has. I feel like he's got some low key means of suppressing it because mm -hmm. it does not give me a closed caption option when I click his videos. But but you guys aren't trying to like are you trying to be monetized or you just don't care because you you know it's not we like, try a little a priority. bit like, like, guys, like Taylor come have to go too hard in the paint with the cum pills in the opening 30 seconds of the show <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. like one of the rules cursing in the first 30 seconds I think it's Taylor's again. like we'll get you coming like a horse yeah mark that down 12 minutes okay I got, that. <laughs> I got a loose question that's gonna just be I feel like it's a waste on you Mm. Uh, but what's your favorite fast food? Your oh, favorite go to fast food spot? And when was the last time you even had fast food? I sometimes get fast food when I'm on a long drive. Um, so within the last six months, uh, I'll so go to that Wendy's lunch within the last six months. That's crazy. <laughs> you said uh, Wendy's. I guess the Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich is probably we, my go to. We love if that. I'm not being we, creative about it. No, we very much support that. You do you know it tastes far better in Canada? everything on that wendy's menu in canada get out yeah really wendy's in canada is such a consistently good and excellent fast food option um hmm. i've had bad i've had bad wendy's three times and two of those wendy's were in the u.s mm -hmm. and the third one the one time in canada was i got a swiss mushroom melt when it was like a brand new sandwich there and i think the kid just fucked it up yeah yeah well new items always sketchy i mean yeah. have you been have, what have you been to canada at all have you experienced uh it's been a long time i think it was a teenager. great white north yeah, I went to Montreal. Oh, really? So you know he's a bad boy, right, Lynch? <laughs> well, I, 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 I just listen. My experience is I, I've been, you know, I, I've seen a lot, like we get a lot of PKA comments like coming into our sphere, you know, mm -hmm. around, and they're saying some. I read somewhere like you ride motorcycles, like you, you cruise down there on a motorcycle to Montreal. Oh, no, I was I went with my parents. He wasn't I was cool when yet. I went there. Oh, he wasn't but cool yet. He wasn't cool with he yet. No, <laughs> he hadn't We're even passed his Minecraft cool era. <laughs> to emerge but yeah i ride i ride motorcycles a lot i do these um big trips where i'll go out to like california utah or something by bike and then ride off road and come back you have a i did a, uh, a crew or you, you got like a, a crew i do you roll with or yeah yeah it's breaking up a little bit like there was one guy who was kind of the leader who really kind of rallied everyone and was like yo you know we're gonna go Need camping off 105 and that guy moved to tennessee so he's Is a little he black mm -mm. um no but he that's gonna be terrible jokes. <laughs> I want to hear it. You can go. We edit this. I mean, he's got tattoos and felony convictions, so he's right there. All right. Um, that's got KA. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that's a terrible joke. But anyway, he uh, he's he's my buddy that like rallies everyone and makes it happen. But he moved so to yeah. Tennessee. Mm -hmm. That's just a bike. That's just a bike away. That's like a it one is. road trip away. It changes things though when, um, like, you need an entire travel day to start the event. Yeah, like if, if we can, if I can kick off in the morning and do like a three day weekend, then that's easy. When three turns into five, it's a whole nother like marital thing. 
Are you are you wearing all leather when you? <laughs> no, I um, it's I wear I don't even know what it's called, but there's like a high tech sort of fabric that's built to not break apart what when you slide helmet? that's actually the most interesting because a helmet's a big decision on a bike i feel yeah. like Dude, I, I don't think it's those everything is a big decision the, the mm -hmm. boots our shoes the everything is a decision boots are a big deal they're the second most important thing behind the helmet and my helmet's by arai and give us a yeah Shoei. give us some brand names because we actually we like that we like uh show your... we rf 1400 is my go-to helmet i've got an arai i have a climb klim i don't know how to pronounce that it's my dual sport helmet okay um yeah, I got a bunch of helmets. I How many bikes? Do you have one bike or a few bikes? Mm, eight, I think. Oh. But sort of three are my wives. So, but okay. I ride them too. But yeah, I'm jealous. I feel like that's like uh, that's like uh, I might have to get into that at some point. That feels like uh, I want to do that when I lived in LA. I break right? bones almost every year. Like I, really? I bet I've broken bones four out of the last five years, five out of the last six. Sometimes it's just a finger or something. Sometimes it's my leg on um, the just, bike. Just going mm -hmm. hard. How do you break yeah. a finger on a bike? I feel like it's always like meat crayon or not anything. So the finger was, uh, it was riding trails on a dirt bike and um, it was getting dark and my goggles were dirty and my talent level's not that high. And there was a tree in the trail. It was like cut and I just didn't spot it. Like trees are made of bark and they're kind of camouflaged with the bark and dirt background. And you're going fast. Yes. I, I have a friend who's better than me. So I'm always at like the edge of my skill level and he's like fucking around, not trying. <laughs> and uh, anyway, what happened was the handlebars probably going 20, 25 hit the tree that was sticking out into the trail and I mm. hurt my hand. And well, that makes sense. Yeah. Just fell. Yeah. Dirt bike, and, does uh, look like a lot of fun. Uh, it looks like it'd be a good time to be like uh, cruising on like an acreage somewhere or whatever um yeah it's fun there's this balance like i don't know for example i could briefly be faster than any of my friends even the ones that are better than me it's just i have to ride at such the edge of my risk profile that i'll surely get hurt you know within you know that day so i'm always like pushing it as hard as i can to where i think i won't get injured and sometimes i get that right and sometimes i don't that, that's like such a sentiment that i've like a, a something i can relate to for many years of my life when I would go snowboarding or skiing with friends that were far better than me and there were always these moments where they're like all right let's they hit look at this whoa this is cool and I'm like cool this is cool to you <laughs> this is going to be the most terrifying thing of the week for me uh, a, bi a big difference is you know when you're 18 you don't admit to that you're like yeah it's cool it's so cool. Yes, <laughs> I broke a kid's arm like that. I broke my my friend's arm, and they blame me because because uh, you told them to go off a jump. I, well, we were like snowboarding, like we were skiing somewhere, and uh, I was I was supposed to be in charge. I guess no one told me, but we I took him on a run that was like a blue run. It was too advanced for him, but I was just I was just doing my thing. And then mm -hmm. uh, I look look back, and he's nowhere to be seen. So I'm like, oh, I'm at the bottom of the mountain, and uh, you see the whatever those guys are called with their little mm -hmm. uh, red jumpsuits. Yep. Ski patrol taking them mm -hmm. down, <laughs> coming <laughs> down, and he uh, completely broke his arm, and uh, I never hung out with him again. Oh, Where did he break it? I know, like up by his bicep, down by his. No, oh, he broke. Uh, he broke. Uh, he broke the, his arm. All like, uh, His like wrist, kind of like in that radio. area. So mm -hmm. not and quite. He's, yeah, and he's dead now. No, he survived. He survived. No, he survived, was... but he's dead from something else, isn't he? No, no, this is a different. Oh, guy. so this is a different Sorry. person. Okay. I've broken a few people's arms accidentally, but oh. this one. This one, I, I was never. I was you never don't want to talk about your dead friend? Not Sound really. like you need closure, bro. No, I don't want to get into that. We have, okay. a, guest. We have a guest today. That's for maybe a more personal. Well, you got any dead friends? Me? Yeah. yeah. How yeah, many? A friend. Well, the one that popped to mind, um, he died about about a year ago almost. Oh, shit. And, uh, Sorry to hear that. He Sorry was like that. my best friend from high school. He had oh, cystic shit. fibrosis. Oh. Um, cystic fibrosis makes you infertile. It's one of the symptoms of it. Yeah. But they put a needle in his balls, and he got twins. So he left two kids behind. Long marriage. Great guy. Real smart. Ivy League guy. And uh, put a needle in both of his balls. Uh, probably one. I know I made a plural. Well, you got two kids, though. You don't get one, one kid shot. per ball. How does making a baby work? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go so, to each individual ball to get the... Uh, each the, ball could hold a like, baby, though. Ten years ago, he wrote me a letter. And uh, the title of it was, It's Getting Harder and Harder to Breathe. And he gave this like recap 
of everything he's been going through. So cystic fibrosis, you build up like phlegm basically in your lungs. And when we were friends in high school, his father, who was an enormous man with giant hands, used to like beat on his back and clear like the phlegm out of him. And he would do these nebulizer treatments and stuff. It was a real big deal. And uh, as an adult, he had a like a vest that would do that pounding for him. And he was really good at following like the medical instructions. I guess a lot of cystic fibrosis people are. And uh, as it got harder to breathe, he'd wear oxygen all the time, like in a backpack. But he was an avid tennis player. So he would fucking strap on that backpack and join the tennis leagues in New York City and just beat people using as little energy as he could. He was pretty good at it. He got a double lung transplant and it just changed his life. All of a sudden, you know, he's taking his kids surfing and stuff. And what's cool is when you get a double lung transplant, your lungs don't have cystic fibrosis like the rest of your body does. He's still infertile. He still has digestion issues. He has all the CF stuff, but not lungs. Those are fine. And the lung transplant got him like 14 years or so. Crazy. Wow. And then another friend reached out to me and uh, he's like, you know, hey, what do you, I got to talk to you? And I'm suspicious as fuck as everyone. Everyone like tries to trick me or whatever. So I made him prove his identity. <laughs> I'm like, tell me something only you would know. And uh, he recounted <laughs> this story of how he got my nose broken <laughs> and uh, somebody beat me up. And uh, it was him, and sure enough, my my friend had died from cystic fibrosis. So Fuck. that's the first one that comes to mind. Yeah. Is there more? Uh, Slow down. I think it's sad enough already. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's the closest one I can. Yeah, think no, of. I did. I had a, uh, one of my best friends in elementary school. One of the guys who I say I'm funny because of, because I used to hang around him a lot, and he was so funny. He was always making jokes. And so it got me like making jokes all the time with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, uh, his, his girlfriend and him, the, their car hit a train and he, his head hit the glass or something and he ended up, he ended up dying. Mm -hmm. And I think about him all the time because uh, he was my best friend all through elementary school. And I remember I, I used to play Quake mm -hmm. and uh, I've always told about it. He never came over to try it. We didn't hang out outside of school too much. Um, but we did sometimes and I was like, oh, next time you come over, you got to play Quake on my computer. Uh, and he got a Nintendo 64 and he was like, you have to try Turok. I went to his house. I tried Turok. Turok was amazing. Looked better than Quake mm -hmm. on my computer. Um, but in, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the thing about Quake was it was online. You could play with people multiplayer and that was cooler than anything, uh, mm -hmm. you know, about Turok to me. And I was, I was trying to tell him he's got to come over. And he came over and he saw it. And he was like, it's all pixels. And I was like, what are pixels? He was like, Nintendo 64 is polygons. This is pixels. This looks bad. And I wasn't able to vocalize to him like, yo, but these are all real people. You know, we're mm -hmm. competing and it's fun. It's different. And I remember him saying, like, uh, you're using a mouse and a keyboard. It's the worst. Like the N64 controller fits in your hand. Um, and it's so fucked because, like, I think about it every day, like, Dude, you're fucking lucky you died, bro. Cause yeah, I have right? such an I told you so fucking ready to go. <laughs> you're lucky you said the N64 Dude, controller's the better than most of the keyboard, bro. Yeah. Really? I will <laughs> never let him forget that. He's fucking lucky, dude. I mean, some people are saying the world's better off now that he's gone. I'll, you know who, eh? Be the ones in the it. tunnels. <laughs> you know which ones in the tunnels I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, instantly. What do you mean? Yeah. There's two now. Well, I, I, <laughs> I always like uh, in the whole evolution of man mm -hmm. thing, like the theory was that we were really like able to retreat into water when we're being chased on land, being able to retreat onto land when chased in water. And we had that ability to do everything. And I'm starting to think, I'm like, are we also built for fucking tunnels? Like is underground an option that we don't explore enough? The sun's good, but too much sun's not that good. Maybe all of our buildings should have been going down instead of up. You know what I'm saying? This is insane. No, we're not built for tunnels. We don't have any digging facilities built into humanity. Like your fingernails are the awful at this. Uh, yeah, but we got a lot of things. Like our, our, our fingernails aren't good for swimming either. <laughs> we make that shit work though. <laughs> yeah, we are pretty lame. In swimming, Maybe if you're going right? really long, you can get a little more uh, speed out of them. You know, 
Yeah, but listen, don't answer if you think this is a completely stupid fucking idea yet. Let's let it marinate a, a bit, all right? Mm-hmm. We might be all built for the tunnels. No, I got I got to say you reminded me I was just I I had one of the most cringe inducing pieces of content I watched. Uh, like we brought this up but like caving is one of the most perplexing activities to me. Like I I get caught up. Like it's in my algorithm and I started like looking up um some of the worst caving incidents cuz I saw this one video, like just one video being like this guy got stuck completely upside down like head first in this Nutty Putty Cave. Really- Nutty Putty Cave. Yeah, and then I started looking at a bunch of them, and I actually there's nothing bad in the video. I couldn't finish the video. It was making my whole insides uncomfortable to watch and hear how he got stuck. It was like I, I nothing else makes me feel that way other than that specific activity. Dude. I am so completely lined up with this. Okay. I, I, so I have a fairly high risk profile, right? Like they did mm. motorcycles at 100 plus miles an hour all the time. Um, acrobatic paragliding, shit like that. Addiction to coke, yeah. just a blast. <laughs> Caving scares the heck out of me. Like, like that, I can barely watch the videos. It is so awful to imagine being stuck in there. Imagine going through a spot so small you have to take off your little bump helmet to fit your body through and thinking that's a good idea. You have to Dude, suck or in. when they, they take in, in a deep like... breath to suck in and then they squeeze it and they don't get to expand out. That's what happened to him as he thought he was almost through. Yeah, he, had, he went the wrong wrong direction, right? But <laughs> oh. do you think it's like so it's the same mentality, like the same thrill, but it's just a fucking weird one? Like you just want to go, you want to be in a really tight spot. It's because obviously okay. I can understand jumping out of a plane. I, I, can, sure. I can be like, oh, that's interesting. Have you done like, I have not. I have no. not done it. I've so don't, be out, I've done, don't be out here acting no, like no, you okay. would, dude. Yeah, I've done a lot of, I would. I've done a lot of cliff jumping. I, I'm from BC, Vancouver, BC. We have a lot of cliff jumping out there. I've done a ton wow, of that. Wow, that's like uh, like thousands of feet smaller, but cool. <laughs> so okay, well, listen, it's pretty cool water. to me. It's not I'm saying I can right? relate like that type of thrill. Mm-hmm. I understand. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's fun. It's a little dangerous. If it's it's if it's How just a fun activity. I don't know. Let's say 300 feet. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 no. Like, no, like we're talking. They're pretty you know, high, though. They're, they're pretty high. high. Yeah, they're yeah. high. Like a lot of people chicken out looking over the. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, uh, looking over this uh, these ledges, you know. So like 40 feet, feet 70 feet. Not so. I'm not quite. We're talking like for me, maybe 30 feet. You know. Okay. Uh, okay. And, I, and and so like I, I'm not quite on the level. Like I don't. I'm not that big of a thrill seeker. I, I still mm-hmm. have some level of like you know what. I might die if I do this. Um, and as I got older, that that threshold has certainly gotten a lot. Um, uh, I just I wouldn't do it now. I guess is how yeah. I put it. Oh, yeah, well, yeah you have a daughter man. now. Yeah, now huh? that you're older, you have less to lose. Right? Da- no, he's got um, a daughter now. He's not allowed to jump off the cliff. Every year, you're closer to death anyway. Every year, you're gambling less money. That's true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> you get to but my also... age, what are you missing? Drooling on yourself? Like you, <laughs> you're all set. <laughs> No, no. You wouldn't be drilling your on prime. yourself tomorrow. If you're in your prime right now. They're gonna might they might figure out how they can like Way fix past you. My prime. <laughs> no, no. They'll download your brain into a new body in like ten years or something like that, and they'll be Woody 2.0, like the Redux or something like no, that. No, you're not way okay. past your prime. You're at your you may be like uh, your your max potential prime at a certain time, but I feel like you're probably at your prime now. No, is no there way. any previous Woody that could beat up the Woody that you are right now? Beat up? I don't know if that, I'm not sure actually. But like, could any the, any of those previous Woodies out fuck the Woody that you are now? Uh, teenage Woody was was jerking off, but what's he doing though, dude? Front handsprings. There's an example. I, <laughs> teenage Woody, front I could do yeah. as many front handsprings as you want. I could go for like a block, just tumble, tumble, tumble. And uh, now, like, I didn't even know it. I was just like, I thought of myself. This is a long time ago. Like in my 30s, I was like, I could do front handsprings. I know this because I've done a thousand of them. And then I tried it at like 32 and I was like, oh, unbeknownst to me, that was taken. <laughs> I didn't realize it was missing until I gave it a go. Oh, and, that's and, so yeah. funny. I didn't think you were going to say. I was like, yeah, but can you fuck? And you were like, uh, for a hot springs. <laughs> uh, front hand springs. Never, I never had front hand springs. I was going to say, I can't even imagine you doing a front hand spring. It'd be uh, a disaster. Dude, imagine you know, a front hand spring. My 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 shirt comes up, like you know, like all of it. See here, I don't know if you can. Uh, you this. can put something in, in the, the group chat, chat there, here. right there, just in the. Did I do right it right there. on the uh, stage? Yeah, stage is cool. 
they're just not even. This is me as a, this is teenage Woody that you're talking about. If you think I'm oh, peaking now, shit, bro. fucking nah. Wow. Yeah. So this idiot doesn't have a fucking motorcycle. He'll kick his ass. You and the boys. He had a motorcycle. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. Honda. Yeah, but he, he didn't have a fish tank, did he? He had a fish tank. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. He he had less money. So okay, that? he had a lot less money. <laughs> 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 teenage Woody was broke. Ugh, get that poor out of here. <laughs> I was actually uh, I was wondering about the the PK podcast because Harley recently did um we did a collabo with uh, Taylor like mm-hmm. in person and I was a little surprised at the sort of thickness of of your boy Taylor there he looked he looked pretty jacked from what I could tell not that I'm I don't think Woody those. and Taylor engage in real life often or have not in, often in a little while. but yeah Taylor's strong as fuck. Well, because you only really you don't see it, right? You don't see it framed up, and then you know your. I mean, your shoulders are kind of popping right now, Woody. I'm not gonna lie. So, yeah, but uh, Taylor's you know. so much stronger than me. So is Kyle. Like, it, it, I I have third place on lockdown in a lot of categories. So, really? But yeah, yes. but you never you never <laughs> ate to grow though, right? No, I. If eat you don't to eat to grow, if I yeah, can. you have to eat to grow. Like that's a. a uh, like a full on just... effort that has to be done. And I know that leading up to the boxing thing where I was like, and I always knew that, but I was like, wow, mm-hmm. eating, eh? You really got to eat. Like to grow, you have to keep eating always, but like f- five times a day. Taylor in particular is just built that way. Like, one, he, he hit puberty at like 10 years old. So you think he's juicing? In like two weeks. You think like he's he, juicing or what? No, I don't. I, I was thinking um, it for a second. I thought for a second because, you know, it, you don't I, think him I and Kyle shocked. injecting fucking trend in the stairwell at PKA <laughs> Incorporated? <laughs> no, dude, when Taylor started lifting and uh, like really adding bulk and size, he was also talking about having kids. And I think his fertility was like a big yeah. deal to him. So that, that, is, that is the big that risk. Locks you got to be careful. Me. So, uh, but they yeah, pills he for that at like 10. And by the time he was like, like 30 days later, he had a hairy chest, full hairy legs. He's strong as fuck. He was that guy in high, in like middle school who could grow a full beard. And, uh, he was on the wrestling team and he would just fucking clobber people. He's built for picking shit up. This, this is the Benizri. That's their Benizri. This is the, this we is had the a friend Benizri that like he was yeah. in eighth grade, went to Tim Hortons to get a job and they made him manager. And he was like 14 and he was the manager of like people in their thirties, like, oh. like, like people not from Canada in their thirties. He, <laughs> he has like facial hair, but he was literally like 14. This is yeah. the problem with, your, with, with what you're describing about Taylor. What he is now, I need to see him on, on trend and, and TRT. I got to see it now. Imagine? Now I got to see, cause it, now you're saying he's genetically predisposed to be, yes, he'd be well jacked and strong. I'm like, let's get this guy on the, let's get this guy on test. Let's find out what it's all about. Can um, you imagine? I, 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 I couldn't imagine that he even I was surprised when I saw the footage. I got the footage. I'm like, this is surprising. Dude, can you imagine for the rest of St. Louis? Would you? This is yeah. an act of cruelty you're performing <laughs> on the Midwest. <laughs> when you say like, uh, can you imagine that? Like him, like fucking <laughs> juiced up on trend. When you say, can you imagine that? What do you imagine? Anytime I'm like, oh, can I imagine this guy juiced up on trend? They have a they're like bricked up rock hard and they're furious. <laughs> they're like mad at their own relatives. That's what I picture. Like, yeah, they're ripped also. But like I'm also like fuck, he'd be f- fucking bricked up. And Taylor's a like a big functional kind of strong, like Jack Reacher sort of Brock Lesnar type. <laughs> yeah. Kyle's more of an aesthetic kind of strong with that yeah. tiny weight. But that's that's the thing with test is that um, you don't always know who's going to be a hyper responder, you know, to it. Some people like that's why you kind of want to know. Like I I always wish I had tried it just to be like what, how would I respond to the sort of chemistry because some people it doesn't really like you see these pictures i love seeing pictures of people like i'm on i'm on juice and they look completely fucking normal or they look (laughs) like a guy who's been working out like a little bit you know and it's like what what's happening i'll never forget i'll never forget the ultimate roast that my this guy who i was training with at the gym way back in the day years ago and he's huge Mm -hmm. like huge huge guy you wouldn't even question he's so jacked and like, I remember this guy came up to him and he was like, yo, like, and they knew each other. He was like, what's up, man? And he was like, yo, check it out. And he was like doing a little flex. And the guy I was training with was like, nice. And he's like, all natural. And the guy I was training with goes, oh, I know. Oh, <laughs> I know. I know. In fact, we all know. Let me tell you something. For the rest of your life, what? as long as you look yeah. like this, which looks great, you will never have to yeah. tell anyone all natural. I promise you on site, we know. Everyone will know how natural you are. You look very natural. And we walked in. I was like, that was a fucking roast. 
Yeah. <laughs> like it was I, like the guy came with the like all natural. And I guess like maybe because he's all natural this to my autistic ass. He was all natural. Right. And the guy. Yeah, but the guy could... that I'm with mm -hmm. is super jacked and is most clearly not. Uh huh. So this guy came up and was like, yo, what's up? What's up? And he was like, check it out. And he was showing off his muscles, which looked good. And he, thought and, it was he was like, and he was like, nice. Like the guy, the, the Jack guy, the super Jack guy was, was said to him, like who he was like, wow, nice. Like just, you know, chill, like cool. And he went all natural. Like to this yeah. guy who I guess yeah. was like, well, like, oh, is that the, so that's cool. Like that it's all natural. Like, don't worry, dude, you look all natural. No one's ever going to think you're a freak like me. People look at me and they know. <laughs> I'm not natural. They know on sight. I'm the least natural thing in here. You, a human being, of course. Me, completely unnatural creature. It's and it was crazy. like, it was a lot said in just like, oh, you look natural. Trust me. We all know. People in that environment have different like ideas of body standards. We had um, Derek from More Plates, More Dates on the show a couple times. And I started watching a lot of his content and it's mm -hmm. hilarious. He'll like, do a natty or not on Superman, right? This is Henry Cavill, yeah. fucking jacked, abs and stuff. And Derek is like, he's just fat. You guys think that's strong? He's fat. Six pack. <laughs> Show through, right? Like, like he's Superman. He said um, Captain America was fat as well. And I'm just like, your idea of fat is twisted. Because <laughs> it is the, like, what is important to you or what impresses you or what you like uh, about it is, because I, I love that shit. Mm -hmm. And it is like appreciating art. Someone has made their body art by committing to it. And it's not only like their commitment, but it's like we said, are they a hyper responder to the juice they're taking? Do you like the juicy look? I love the juicy look. Mm -hmm. I love when I see a human who's mm -hmm. like six foot and is like 313 pounds <laughs> and has no body fat. And uh, it's like a fucking big rock. Like, do I want to look like that? No. But yeah, if you told me tomorrow, like, oh, I could look like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll take it. Of course. I never believe anyone that's like, oh, I don't like that. I'm always like, yeah, hey, you think, you know, but like other than the fact that maybe he's going to die 25 years earlier, it's pretty fucking sick to look at. Uh, but he sculpted that. Dude. Like he made himself that. And then other people, maybe they just go super lean. And that's like, it looks like it's like different uh, medias, you know, like it's like one is a watercolor, one is maybe like a, a, a an oil painting, but it's like, you know, appreciation but of. But also to like his point where he's saying, where like someone like Derek, who's staring at uh, people's bodies and assessing them a lot. There's always, like, you know, you don't understand something completely. Like if you went to a bodybuilding show, it's like, what's the difference between these fucking guys? They all are jacked. Oh. And there is, there is a difference. It's like, you know, it's like, then you start learning about a subject or maybe like consuming it more and you start learning the nuance of something, you know? And you're like, oh shit, his back does look different. The striations are different. His, you know, the legs, you know, but if you're just looking at bodybuilding, let's say as an example, I, I can I see why most people are like, I can't understand the difference between this guy and that guy other than maybe their height, you know? Um, I, I started getting into watching bodybuilding content mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I'm terrible at stack ranking. I can kind of pick out which two or three are the best and which two or three are the worst. Sure. But you put eight on stage and outside of that, I get the order all wrong. Yeah. yeah. But in, when we talk about what we like, like, all right, my knee jerk reaction was, no, I don't want to be that super strong guy that Harley just described. However, I'm watching Reacher with my wife and Lifetime the way that one. woman drools about that dude, like, I guess I'd rather be less. You know? She's just like, yeah, you think he'll fuck tonight? And I'm like, yeah, you will. Yeah. So, you're like, uh, do you think I will? <laughs> Most definitely. But I, I think what I really want is what I can't have. And for that reason, like if, if I were to choose a body, it'd be like peak Connor Murphy. Probably a lot of people don't know that, but. You know, picture People like on this, this podcast, we've you know, yeah. about it a few We've gone deep on Connor oh. Murphy. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Well, Pete Connor Murphy is my like answer key. You know, this is what a perfect male. If, if I'm an alien coming down in my UFO and I need to select a male specimen, I grab that guy from ten like years Z's, ago. Like Z's, like that the the the, the Ooh, adventure yes. of the, if, the yeah, aesthetic. The look, aliens you know, come here. And the aliens come here, and they could take you. Send up Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson? Yeah, it fucked their shit up. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, what? These people are so crazy. Like, <laughs> pop stars today 
dance like Michael Jackson. They do things today that are still just like Michael Jackson did, inspired like uh, inspired by Michael Jackson. But this guy would get to an alien planet. Have you been watching Corey Feldman's comeback? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, <laughs> you, I saw something recently. I thought the craziest like the, thing too. The fans where he had that guy come out and hype it up. Uh-huh. And no, it was I was like, he was like, guess who's back? Guess who's back? Or something. He's like, you got a chance, or he's not coming out. And then I saw on Paulie Shore. Oh, wait, wait, Shore. but then yeah. then they like drop the music and it comes out and it's like the wrong time. He's like, <laughs> no, start it over. And it's just fucking. And and I looked at this and like the dumbest people in this video are the people that are at this show in the rain. <laughs> I saw the same thing. So it made me deep dive. And I went and watched his latest music video where he like does that song. And uh, I, I mean, it's a little silly. It's kind of sad. <laughs> I. I <laughs> it's like, bro, just embrace your has been status like the rest of us, would you? Yeah, but- yeah, I do. I I see that sometimes, you know. Uh, embrace the has been status. I'm like, come on, have some dignity. But mm-hmm. then you see what's going on with Vitaly. No, you know Vitaly. I don't think he's so. the prankster. I know the name. Do you lift, bro? And then he jumped out of a bush and punched a woman in the face. I know Anatoly or something. Is no, that no, that's guy? the lifter. No, Vitaly was okay. like the biggest prankster on YouTube, 2000. He would dress like a Russian hitman and like, uh, like, okay, like, like handcuff a briefcase to someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he used to roll like like Roman Atwood and and uh, they like the okay, hand, they were they were like they were like the main and Fousey, they were like the main pranking channels, and some would call him the goat. He, you know, he he ran on the field like a like the World Cup. He's done a couple like weird like stuff like that. You've definitely seen his content. Yeah, okay. but, yeah, it's it's he just he started he came back. Um, cause his, uh, cause he punched that woman and knocked her out and he, it was really bizarre. And we say his whole arrest is on YouTube. Uh, but, um, Oof. he started going live on kick as someone would in that scenario. Uh, and I don't know if you saw Lynch, but he went and like fought a predator. Oh, I'm, fully ca- I'm catching everything. I'm a, I'm in the, uh, Vitaly algorithm now. Yeah. He like <laughs> went and did one of those uh, predator things where I think you pretty much ruin the chances that he will get uh, convicted when you do that stuff. Um, but uh, anyways, they did it, and the, it was just uh, popping off. And well, was uh, it a and, setup, or was it? Yeah, know, he set the guy up. He set the guy no, up. No, 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 no. I'm saying. Oh, was the whole it, thing fake? Is the whole thing fake, or is that real? It just looked really real, just the way it was going down. Yeah, but. there's, yeah, there's seemed real. Um, but okay. then again, everything could be fake. But, but then I just saw Aiden wants to sign Vitaly. But this is what they always say. But yeah, yeah, but imagine like, you know, just being like in, in the hole and all that. And then you fucking go hard for two weeks and kick is like, hey, cut you a deal. This is why this why I'm enjoying it the most is because I, I don't know, Woody, how much you like. If you don't know Vitaly, maybe you're not seeing all these. Other he doesn't ones. watch this stupid ass yeah, live. He doesn't even okay. have a fish tank as far so, as I know. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> <laughs> But like the, the, the sort of the the younger content creators that are there like the live streamers or the the sort of what's driving traffic is a lot of um like i want like they're doing activities that makes me want to punch these people in the face like just the way they're treating people and acting like fucking assholes Mm. online and and like they go into the mall and bump into people and then when people get offended they also have a huge black security guard with them yes now that i've seen seen on reddit yeah Yeah, that kid okay yeah yeah. so So it would be clipped there his crew so that crew of like new like uh, pandemic people that like mm-hmm. they, they like had these crucial years of growing in their life. They watched YouTube during pandemic and now they're mm-hmm. loose and they're like live streaming. They're these little like uh, mutants. Yeah, uh, pretty much you take are, like yeah. basically like uh, the biggest mutant of the previous generation, Vitaly, and you kind of throw them in there and the vibes are all fucked. <laughs> the vibes are all fun. they like they're like smashing each other's fun. and i know a lot of it is played up or it's scripted sure. like they know they're gonna yeah. do it but mm-hmm. then they script stuff but then also try and get one over on each other while scripting mm-hmm. it and to everyone listening home it's just basically idiots on live stream acting like idiots mm-hmm. um, but the way it works like with this kick deals <laughs> and stuff like this gambling yeah. money is you could do something and, and and then there is like i believe there are deals out there for people i like, do think uh, that, like, do like think- offering a vitali like seven figures is a is a a rounding error in their accounting really at the end of the month, so it's not a big deal, you know, when you're dealing with gambling money. Yes. What is backed by? Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah. I do think the funny part is just that these kids, I, don't, I just 
you, you could, it's immediate, it's evident to me immediately that they're not necessarily ready for his energy because he's like old school, kind of crazy. Like, he's crazy. You know, he does. Also, most around. importantly, yeah, he's Russian. <laughs> no security. And yeah, when, a Russian security. Wants, when, a, when a Russian wants to be crazy, they might be like like S tier crazy in the world, <laughs> especially if they're a woman. I don't a like Russian Dante woman as a victim that, that wants to commit to being fucking, you know, like that'd be she'll fuck your life up. Yeah. Can't say, can't say I've ever been in a relationship. I'm making up one. everything. I don't know. I don't even know. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm trying Your to run. Expertise, passport, bro. Where, where are the best women from? <laughs> oh, uh, Asia. I say those, that. I, I could say that, but I'm saying like 15 countries. When those I aren't really women in Thailand. You know that, right? Oh, we know. I was Maybe. texting Justin about Lynch about it all all morning. Our cameraman just landed. Our guy that like films with us. He just landed right? in Thailand, mm. um, and he's uh, posting up there. And uh, he's like, yeah, I'm seeing some guys out here with uh, women, quote unquote. I don't think they know. And I'm like, dude, they know. They definitely know. They know. They paid a little extra for that. You pay a little extra for a little extra. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Um, Yeah. But if you went down to Thailand, Woody, would you try and have a little taste? No, I'm married. But I've seen it. I, I, I used to go to the Dominican Republic, which I didn't know. But apparently that's like number two on the sexcation like destination list. And I used to go with like four or five guy friends of mine on these surfing trips in the Dominican Republic. Your wife's and not going to listen to Ben Cheater. You can tell us the truth. but continue. This, is, this is the truth. But um, uh, the first time we go down, it, it's not me, but one of my buddies sat next to a guy. She's who's not going to listen, but fine, continue. <laughs> he was going to the DR on a sexcation. And he just starts laying out like all the, the things you need to know about how to find whores in the Dominican Republic. And... Uh, uh, then we get there, and oh my god, it was totally true. There were all these guys, seventy pounds overweight, sixty years old, bald, with the hottest twenty-two-year-old girls the Dominican Republic had to offer, and they're just having dinner together, hanging out on the beach together. Sounds like Sauce Boss, twenty fourteen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it, like so, our eyes were open to it, even from touchdown, and then just every time we went out to eat, every time we went to the beach, you'd see them pairing up. Yeah, but see, like, uh, I mean, it's not my scene personally, but yeah, I'm also married. Ye- so, but let's just say your wife is like, I want you to get a hand job from this sexy lady who's not a lady. You're oh, not she's not a lady. In- You're asking me, or asking no? It's a lady boy. I mean, you owe it to your wife to make her happy, bro. Yes, you let her tug you, Lynch. In this scenario, no, I can't. You'd be a jerk not to. Yeah, you would be. You piece of shit. Yeah, no. you don't love her, I guess. Yeah, that's unfortunate, you know. But I, just don't think, I just don't think I can get to it. You're gonna let yeah. your homophobia ruin your hand job from this beautiful lady, boy. I wouldn't even be getting. <laughs> yeah. I think what he's yeah, trying thought, to tell thought, us thought. is he wants the BJ. <laughs> he's like, hand I'm job. working, I'm working. Yeah, I was working up to the BJ. <laughs> uh. <laughs> See, like you can't go there. And then come back. Like I can't go to I can't go to Thailand, film four videos or something, and then come back and be like, "Yeah, Thailand was great." People are like, "Yeah, Thailand was great." Hey, bud, <laughs> yeah, right. would you get up to with Thailand that we don't have here so much, right? What'd you do? And like, there's no. And I'm like, no, I know there's a lot there, but I no, I didn't, dude. You, the, there's a real woman there. Why would I? <laughs> nah, okay. you really think that? And then he like months later, just being like, "Yo, hey." You don't think that when I was in Thailand, I fucked all these boys, do you? Well, they're Branding girls. Buckingham did. Did you watch his videos when he went to Thailand? Do you know yeah, Branding Buckingham? I, I did, yeah. I watched, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he, he didn't do a lady boy, though, did he? Oh, I didn't mean to say that. I don't I don't think so. I think they were Dude, girls. We're talking about, no, <laughs> girls. What is this, Canada? <laughs> 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 no, he, he, he went there, and it was like during COVID. So he's a he's a fighter on so he's not like a pro or anything. No, but, but he did Muay Thai for a bit there. And stuff. He did he trained some Muay Thai there, and before he could do that, he had to quarantine for two weeks. And he's like, I definitely didn't sneak out and fuck whores. And then there's like video of him climbing out the window. <laughs> <laughs> and he came on our show and told us all these stories and stuff. I watched a video where he had like uh, people in his hotel room there, and the hotel room even just looked so funky in itself. Um, but the uh, uh, 
Oh, shit. I was going to say something about... Brandon, hotel boys. room, lady boys, regular ladies, no, quarantine, I'm COVID, not coming. <laughs> you tell me, like, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Uh, people are going to Thailand to not pursue lady boys as need- well. Yeah, but you don't know. believe them. Like, you, like if we went there and we like my went, parents would go there every year, you don't believe them? No, I, w- I wanted to go with Eric. I wanted to go when your mom was going because she goes all the time. And then it's like, then you have a you have, I, I you have a cover story after you get your no because then people are like, like oh you I was went with my aunt uh, yeah you, you went to Thailand family. you went to Thailand it was like oh yeah I was with my aunt it's like well your aunt is fucking crazy for that dude what's your aunt <laughs> doing out here with lady boys I'm not judging your aunt yeah oh that's what I was gonna say you know who did go out and did do some big moves with lady boys who Connor Murphy that's true really we consumed a lot of Connor Murphy lady boy content Woody because what that's happened was um uh there's this guy Doc. She was a biohacker. You might have to bleep that name. Oh, yeah, probably. Um, we'll get the video to get taken down. <laughs> uh, but he was a, a biohacker, and uh, they were doing stuff like like uh, squirting needles in their noses that gave them super hard erections. Uh, and then they would walk through the Ladyboy district like uh, with hard-ons. And doing man, like, doing man, like, man on the street content. Yeah, so doing like, man on the street content. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was so crazy was like uh, they they live in this house and one of the guys, another YouTuber that lives in that house was, uh, it looks like he was killed and his body was in the house for 25 hours while uh, they were in the house or one of them was in the house, Dr. Huge, uh, for an extended period of time there and the the body was upstairs uh, in the room and uh, there's a lot of information that's come out since then. Well, he also just started uploading content the day after. And he was hit hit on the head, uh, apparently. But yeah, but the thing is, like, uh, like the day uh, after that he was, uh, you know, um, killed in that house, dead in the house. Yeah, his his buddies uh, were put up like videos like we took Viagra and went to the shooting range with lady boys. That was the video. Like, can you imagine like uh, Taylor's dead in your bathroom and you're downstairs? Woody the next day with kyle like what are we gonna do for this pka thumbnail (laughs) (laughs) well obviously it'll be the clouds with taylor's head in it of course dude so taylor (laughs) slept in a bunk bed rolled out of it and landed on his butt right so now he has this dent in his butt that apparently you could fit like a tennis ball in like he is like permanent damage. We, I am so furious. I did not ask to inspect the dent in person. I w- where I was going with that was like, oh, Taylor's dead body's upstairs. If you think I'm not going to check out, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me at all. It's like, all right, I got to see this. It was not a few pics. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so mad. I didn't ask him for. That's it. the thumbnail right there. Taylor's butt exposed. That'd Thumb- be crazy if I saw way, Taylor. Dead. <laughs> Taylor the first time beating him in real life I'm like let me see that ass mm-hmm. let me see that you spoke about it enough let me see that ass give man. me that cake Taylor man you know who would make the best lady boy on PKA probably Kyle like probably eh he's prettier than, he, than Taylor and I yeah he's settled then it's Kyle yeah it's gotta be him damn he's gay for that yeah <laughs> and, I, and I, I don't mean to flex but I think Taylor's a third prettiest girl on the show yeah because you don't want like uh like a girl who's gonna kick your ass you don't want a lady boy that's like exactly a man lady yeah <laughs> if he put all of his effort into being feminine he wouldn't come close <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's like uh <clears throat> me uh in grade four dressing up as a girl for halloween was nothing it's 1994 I was at a Halloween party with my football team. I dressed as a girl. Some people do that in their life, but some Halloween they'll dress as, and like, it was like, mm-hmm. oh, this is so crazy. I can't believe you did that. If that happened today. What'd you wear? I wore like a, like a dress mm-hmm. and like boots and I had a long hair wig mm-hmm. and my sister did my makeup and I you went have, to like. You have my, a long history of, of uh, pretty interesting uh, costumes. Costumes. Yeah. Yeah. And then so I it, went was a, to, it wasn't like a cheerleader outfit or anything. I'd be no, 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 no. That'd be good as hell, dude. The football <laughs> Halloween party. It's not too late. <laughs> so I pulled up and like you know, it was people were like, "Wow, well, it's crazy!" And I won uh, best Halloween costume. Um, <clears throat> if that happened in 2024, if I pulled up like, like you, you bring your kid dressed as a girl for Halloween, you got dads that'd be like, "Hey, I don't want this shit in here. Why are you fucking with the kids?" 
there was never a second of me being like, I want this to be my identity or anything. Um, and people were able to be like, oh, look, yeah, he's dressed as a girl. If that happened today. Like if my kid was like, dad, I want to be a girl for Halloween. I'd be like, yo, I was your girl for Halloween. These days, mm-hmm. though, someone's going to take that. Someone's going to feel a, let's just and there's nothing wrong. with, But let's just not bother them tonight. So put on this buzz like your costume is. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Wait, so you th- who would take offense to it? Lynch. Someone- Lynch would. No, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, just, take offense to what? He's just crabbed. Just me. like, you know, you got uh, your your daughter's at a Halloween party. The boys are dressing like girls. The girls are dressing like boys. Look at your beanie. You don't like that. Well, it's minus 40 here right now, but that's uh, besides the point. But I, if you I, like I, that, you wouldn't wear that hat. Minus 40. <laughs> it's not literally a minus 40. It is literally. Well, hold on. In, in Celsius. In, in Celsius, not in. Uh, it's the same enough. at minus 40, right? Uh, you know what? I'm not. I don't know that particular information, but I can tell you that it's been minus forty in Alberta for about. Uh, uh, in his where he is, it was minus. I saw the notification. I forgot to send it. To, it said minus fifty nine with wind chill. With wind chill, yeah. Good God. Yeah, it's, it's, we're not we're not fucking around up here. Are you in it's, Canada? Uh, I'm in Canada. Yeah, I'm up in yeah. um, you know, like yeah. Alberta. Which, by Are the way, off the top of his dome, mm-hmm. minus forty both both ways. Wow, fucking that's... off the top of his. Dome. I will never forget that. That's the same. Yeah, now it's true. That is one of the one piece of information you learned that I I, I should have known that now is going to. I think I had heard that before. Uh, that's why I was like rings a bell. But this time, never again. I can't wait. I'm going to be on a podcast within the next couple yeah. of months. I'll be like, my sports the same. Fahrenheit Celsius. <laughs> you didn't know that. Yeah, everyone knows that, right? That's just the thing people know. Yeah, I sh- we should have Harley. We look like idiots now. We're going to cut this. I can't believe this. Um, no, but it's. Uh, I I am a little concerned about the weather, but also concerned uh, that I'm not going to understand. Like my daughter's so young right now. Like I don't know what it's going to be like in a few years. You know, um, what do you mean, like global what, warming? No, what you can and cannot do. What's going to be going on at school? Oh. Like it's already so different than when we grew up to now. And so, like, if you're not in, like, Harley, you don't have kids. You don't. You don't like. You get. To, you're going to experience their experience on some level as they go through school. And like, I already hear weird sort of incidents and stories that just weren't a thing in the 90s uh in mm-hmm. the 80s you know are going to be very different lay this out how... for me I'm, I'm feeling lost and out of touch. no like like it's what, like, like just like how like what is taught in school like just the way that we do, uh, do you not like your wife at work even for example let's say if we took it like uh like does your wife uh does she have a job mine yeah no no she okay. stopped working uh, nine or, months or a friend she of your pregnant okay a friend of yours <laughs> or something that like because i've heard of like people in workplaces that are not like in this weird youtube industry i'll hear of you know microaggressions, microaggressions. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly like, yeah. things yeah. like that yeah. you're yeah. like wait that's a thing now or someone being like um can you not sign your emails e- at the end with that because that's offensive to these people because or uh we got a complaint because you um you have this sticker on your car and things that were like not really a thing people make a thing of now and sometimes it's justified sometimes it's the most fucking dumbest thing ever and for for me i always know that like like being a teacher like in school when you add kids to it Mm -hmm. these things can get crazier either way it could be crazy any way you cut it you know is that what you were? That's what you were talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like you know? uh, microaggression is, is like kind of like a good. And Harley's bringing up a good point. Like, in the, if you work, at, like we work in such a weird, we're not exposed to lots of people in a corporate, say, a corporate environment or something like that, where they, mm-hmm. you know they're running huge HR considerations on everything, and and very much <laughs> different than <laughs> you know the conversation we're having right now. Uh, up until this point, it, it is. I don't know. I'm just preparing myself. Uh, like if Taylor did that Japanese mm, accent mm, impression. Oh, well, shit. being a, a, a phys ed teacher at elementary <laughs> school. <Totally. laughs> yeah, that'd be super funny. Is that the rest of that sentence? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just never heard of a microaggression until uh, now. So I heard of it a long time ago. They they taught it to me back when I worked at Cisco. At Cisco oh, so like over college. twelve years ago. Hmm. Yeah, oh, you they, worked at Cisco. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I used like to be a, a, like a logistics manager or something like that. I was a senior software architect, I think. Senior oh, software sure. engineer, no something he knows like that. Minus forty is the same, bro. <laughs> this guy, fucking, are you kidding me? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I used to. I be get smarter. it now. Um, yeah, but a microaggression was stuff like, "Hey, when you're talking to me," and then late like, email comes in, and I kind of like read it for a second, and then give you my attention back. 
that was what was defined as a microaggression back in the day. You know, checking my phone while you're trying to, why you think you, you have just my pissed attention. me off with that yeah. perfect example. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it was if, I saw, if someone looked away to look at their email and I was standing there at work and we're both getting paid and they're day, I'm like, oh, take your time. I actually enjoy <laughs> standing here for a couple seconds instead of being at my desk where I'm going to be for the rest of the fucking day. So this is cool. Yeah. It like it was a nice little thing to me. Right. Because I, I, my dumb ass would be offended but then also be the guy that would do it to someone else, right? So like when I'm doing a one-on-one with my boss and he and I'm talking to him, I'm like, this shit's important. I need to come out of this meeting with him thinking that I'm the bee's knees. That's my goal in this meeting, this little one-on-one I'm having with him. And while I'm explaining all my lovely accomplishments for the last week, he checks, his, like he can't keep his eyes off the title of his incoming email. That's bullshit. But then the situation reverses and one of the guys that report to me, I'm like, well, yeah, this email came in. I cared about it more than you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I gotta say, what I never you considered- hit him with that one. You hit him with that one. You're like, this is important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sauce boring. bosses emailed me. Uh, <laughs> I, I have to say, uh, I never really considered uh, your, that you had a life before PKA. Um, that's so like. Do you have friends from the Cisco days that like like that? Such seems like a weird thing to be like a senior um, software, or whatever it is, and then now right. I'm the host of PKA, right? And now Kyle. I tell dick jokes. <laughs> yeah, um. it's like like going off selling cum pills, you know? Whatever. Like this, it seems like a really. They must have been like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Um, or were, yeah. were you not like that integrated with people at work? When I'm a little integrated, like were your friend, like you know, like you like you you work at like say you work somewhere. I don't know how long you worked there for. Like you probably had friends there and people mm-hmm. that you like knew, and then to transition to this sort of. You so know. it's been a while. I keep up with a couple guys. One Dan was on my show. I keep up with him. Okay. Uh, he came on our show and told brilliantly the story of him and his wife getting a divorce and her like emotional. She had online emotional affairs back when that was like a new thing. And uh, he Where was did she just do it. Where did she do it? Facebook. Sorry. Facebook. Oh, I was going to say Facebook. One hundred percent. Yeah. And. Uh, Dude, the story was amazing. I think it's PKA 141 if anyone wants to hunt it down. But like she was just getting a little more distant. He'd walk into the room and she'd like close the laptop when he got there. Mm. And he's like, oh, really? So you were just sitting here TV off laptop closed? Like that's what I'm meant to believe that you were doing Ooh. while I wasn't here? <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, uh, that's silly. The, like her the time was social just video. <laughs> right? yeah. a little like guarded and stuff. Mm. So um, he had a digital camera. And he checked it and the memory card was deleted. But as you know, if like they don't delete the contents of the card, they just delete the index. It's like removing the card catalog from the library. All the books are still there. Mm-hmm. So he went and saw the contents of the card and, uh, you know, like got some software to sort of hack it. And there she is sending like photos of her in a bra, photos in her top list, stuff like that to people Facebook online. Crazy. Yeah. And for people uh, online for free. Yeah. yeah right she didn't understand the money she had she could have made <laughs> and um uh i remember i was i wanted to beat up the guy with him this is i was a little younger then and um i was training a lot at the time like i did uh you're uh, like more, i got these i want to fucking use them. i got i did more time brazilian jiu-jitsu like four five times a week at the time and uh i i sound like some wannabe tough guy but i was actually serious maybe i got my ass kicked but i was like dan you want to fuck this guy up like and Dan's like oh, I don't know about that. I'm like, dude, he took your wife. Like he's ruining your life. You have four daughters. Let's get him. And Dan's like, eh, I, mean, I think he's kind of big. It's like, Let's see how big he is. And like that. And that's where You're like I'll fucking roll with him. Yeah. I Once was... we're on the ground, we're the same size. I'll roll with him. <laughs> I that was my take on it. That was my dumbass solution. He was a cop too. He probably would have shot me. <laughs> he was a I cop started... also. Yeah, this yeah. Is so funny. But I was undeterred. Guy. I wanted to get him. And. uh Anyway, he tells the story, police pulling him over, of him racing. And he's like, I think my wife is online right now talking to people. His tears are rolling down his eyes. He's talking to the policeman. And Dan killed it. Anyway, I still keep in touch with him a little bit. So, so yeah. like, you, you kind of just started. I just don't know the lore of, I don't know, like, the lore of PK or how, like, it came to be. Because to go from that kind of job to sort of, you know, be an online person. There was a Minecraft. There was a Minecraft. It, like, it was, there must have been YouTube something that happened game, in between. YouTube yeah, like, or journey. era. Yeah. It started with Dan in that as he, he needed a, he moved out of his home and needed a place to sort of reset his head. Sure. So I was like, all right, you can stay in my guest room. So he stayed with my family while he was kind of this, you know, 
getting himself emotionally right again, and he brought his Xbox. So I liked games when I was younger, but I went through this phase of like 13 years maybe where I got um, a couple college degrees and a master's degree. So all I did is work in school, like the whole time. And then that wraps up, Dan moves in, and he has an Xbox. And I'm just like, holy shit, like I have time to play games. What was it that you Sign that me up. turned on first or played that you were like, Left 4 oh. Dead. Left 4 Dead. I was yeah, addicted to a, Left 4 Dead. And I was better one. than average at it. And I played it all the time. And it would just get to be like 6 p.m. I'd get home from work. Dan and I would get on our pajamas and play games <laughs> in the living room. Uh, and I was totally excited about that. Then I got into Call, Call of Duty 4. And I started watching YouTube videos on how to get better at Call of Duty. That was my thing. Then I found Hutch. And I had this idea in my head that if I could be on Hutch's team, I'd win every game all night long, <laughs> right? You take my talents, which were mediocre, and Hutch, and put us on the same team, we'd never lose. So I desperately wanted to play with Hutch. He needed a um, uh, a graphics card or something. No, he needed a, a capture card. So he was asking everybody to like donate a dollar so that he could afford this capture card way back in the day. I was, was like, like, bro, the I'll you... Was it the yeah, Hapaugi? Yeah, probably was. I or something. <laughs> I was like, bro, I'll give you 20 bucks. You just have to play with me. And he's like, no, nah, I could never. Like, I would, that's too much. It's too generous. Um, $20 for me to have this card. Like, I, I couldn't accept that kind that's of cash. That's so funny. These days, they're like 500 to even have me respond. <laughs> yeah. so, as I was like, well, I just gave you $20 to your PayPal or whatever. It's up to you whether you uh, come through on your end. Like, like I twisted, like, I got him. So uh, I spent the whole night gaming with like the Optic Boys. That's such X a, by the way, that's such Hutch. a, like I feel like that was a very accurate message you sent, right? Like, are what you remembering it quite well? Being like, "Well, yes. the ball's in your court," because exactly. I feel like I have written messages to people, like e even after Epic Meal Time, like people where I'm like sending a message to a person, and I, like, I I, I don't desperately need this, but I very mm -hmm. much want this and would love this, and it would be very cool for me. But like, if it's a no, that's cool. So now let me construct a chill laid back message that's not too many sentences that's going to capture the essence of how important this is to me but like i really don't need it to up to you and mm -hmm. so being like well balls in your court i just sent it to your paypal so it's, <laughs> yeah, i right. mean that no pressure dude but i'm gonna be live for the next nine hours if you want to be in there <laughs> so he more than came through i 1v1 with like all these pro gamers lost i'm sure every time on shipment with him and hex and the other boys and uh, I don't know. So the, I made a YouTube channel. I guess, oh, this is what it was. I was like leaving nice comments on people's videos, like mostly Hutch and some of the other YouTubers of the day, hoping that like I could play with them. That was kind of my, I really wanted to play with them and win games. And uh, um, then I got to realize like, oh, what I need to do is be in their community. I, I wasn't trying to be a big star. I just wanted to be a content creator and also ran because, you know, Hutch was playing with Beyond, who was playing with Hex, who was playing with Blame Truth and like X Cal. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to be as good as them. But if I could just be a YouTuber, you know, like Pyro or something like an also guy, then I could get in their games and I could play with them. And it kind of worked. I, I got to be a YouTuber who got to play with the other YouTubers and stuff. And it was fun. So it's funny uh, because to this, like, like before I did my channel, uh, Epic Meal Time, like I watched Freddie Guang for like, Mm -hmm. maybe two years and uh like to this day i'll play call of duty with him like we play and he is uh like like i'll have other friends come and join like friends that i know and we'll play and uh like this happened literally three nights ago and i'm like we're playing and i was with my buddy this guy who who literally mm -hmm. the first day i turned on xbox live the first game in Unreal Championship, the first person I spoke to on the headset, the first guy I added on my friends list is a person that I then met in person seven years after that and who I still talk to today and who we still like message and everything. And like, it's just, we've, it's been like fucking 25 years. Hmm. Uh, it was like a, an ex, but like, um, he came in and I, I was playing and we're doing like whatever. And I'm like, oh yeah, Freddie this, Freddie that. And then like, he was like, yo, yes, I, I, I like Freddie, like video game high school. Yeah. And so, it's about, so I'm like, yeah, Freddie Wong on your fucking team. So don't embarrass me. 
and fucking put in yours. Put put pull pull. I need you to pull right now. <laughs> Freddie Wong's out here, pro uh, guitar hero worldwide. You know he was a world guitar hero champion. Of course I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I don't know him <laughs> like you. I I have met Freddie Wong, and he was really nice when I. I was at some YouTube event, maybe it was like Billionaire Bash or something, and uh, it was at Alki David's living yeah, room. <laughs> Freddie Wong was like thirty times more popular than I was, but he was really nice to me, and you wouldn't know it by the way he treated everyone so nicely. Nicest so, guy, yeah, yeah. For, for that's real. my impression of him. So I want to sh- share this real fast because even though it's, uh, it's just a Freddie Wong thing, but like I said, I play uh, Call of Duty with him. And so when we're going to go play Warzone or something, he'll like send a, I don't even know if he wants me to play this, but he'll send like a voice memo, I guess to like get me hyped up or like not just me, but the other two guys I play with, Nico and Dean, he'll like send this. (laughs) Did you think you were going to live forever, kid? Give me a break. Tell you what. You can make it up to me. I'll give you a chance on the battlefield tonight. I'll see you in the LZ. This guy's great. So, <laughs> like, so sick. <laughs> It just have the sound effects and the music and like you getting like you're getting like a nano rocket jump production yeah. mm-hmm. in exactly, your text yeah. message. And even though this is now a guy who I've been friends with for 11 years, I'm still like fucking exclusive Freddie Wong fuck piece of content right there. Like, <laughs> and, and playing with him, there's he does two voices. He's either that guy or he's like, uh, seriously, uh, we got company guys. <laughs> like, or he's that guy, and it's yeah. But uh, do you are you gaming multiplayer at all? Anything online? No, not now. I went um, couple maybe three years ago. I was playing Tarkov, yeah, addictively, yeah. Um, and after that, I played uh, Doom. I beat Doom for oh, whatever that's worth. But, but for Tarkov, like, I want to ask, like, when you're playing it a lot, you play. We're playing with Kyle and Taylor, or Kyle. Uh, I I play with Kyle a little. Uh, what kind of happened was Kyle introduced me to his friend group, and then not long after that, Kyle lost interest in Tarkov, so I kind of took his spot. <laughs> now I'm the new guy I'll play with his friend group, <laughs> which is great. If you don't know Tarkov, and I know you know it, but maybe the audience doesn't, um, you really need some hand-holding to get up to speed in that mm. game and learn how to play, so I was appreciative for that. Well, I was going to ask you, so like... The the hand holding of the game, you were with guys who took it very seriously and they told you what's up. Oh, that gun should do this. Here's the move. So like you played with guys like that. And then you could be that guy and maybe you pass that on. Um, I've never once been a guy who goes into the meta of something. And Tarkov is very much that kind of game where it's like, oh, you don't you gotta get this gun, you gotta do this thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um Call of Duty is the first time where I've been playing and I'm I'm playing Warzone and I'm just like, you know, I always did fairly well and I never meant a lot and I've had some wins before. Mm-hmm. But then there were scenarios mm-hmm. where I'm like, I don't mm-hmm. understand why I'm performing so badly and it can't just be like, I'm older because I'm putting the time in out here. Um, but for like first time, I went and pulled up a YouTube video. I'm like, get good at Warzone. Holy shit. Jeez. The amount of information that I just didn't care about because... I always found my fun in games by exploring them and doing it or whatever. This this whole, there was a billion options and things that I'm like, oh, you could turn that on or turn that off or this gun mm-hmm. is like a must have. That gun is a never even fucking pick it up scenario. And this information's out there. And I'm like, the game is different. I can't say it's better. It's probably worse this way. But like finding mm-hmm. out like, what is good, what is not good in the game is a whole new part of gaming that used to not exist before. And there's this channel that I really like, Ren's Reviews. Mm -hmm. Does funny videos about gaming and stuff. And he was talking about how like these internet guides ruin gaming. Because like you're never gonna play Call of Duty and have fun with the shotgun Mm -hmm. because everyone knows that's not the meta. So there's never gonna be a guide that you could shotgun because everyone's using this SMG and you'll never shotgun that. Like things like that. Mm. And um, it's this for me has changed how I game because I never did that. But for Warzone, I did it. And the amount of my performance is so much better. 
And like he used an example, Halo 2. I played Halo 2 so fucking much. I never knew BXR. I learned of BXR in Halo 3. And that was in Halo. Uh, you punch, then hit reload. And as soon as you hit reload, you could shoot the gun. And so it'll be a punch shoot. And it's in like one second. And it's like something that they chose to never fix because it was a thing that I guess was in the game. And for, and BXR was something that like, yeah, I played the game and he brought it up too. He was like, I played this game and same for me. I played it for so long with so many people, spoke to so many people. No one mentioned BXR. I can think of the times where I got killed by a BXR. I was like, the mm. fuck was that? <laughs> and I just thought it was like lag or something. Uh, but that was something that, you know, if back then BXR was the meta and everyone knew it, that kinda, could change the face of wherever Halo went in in terms of how people play it. That kind of detailed stuff was the original purpose of my YouTube channel. Like it, the whole thing was like, look, I am not the human aimbot that XCal is. I'm Woody's gamer tag, the unexceptional gamer, and these are the techniques and tactics that will help you succeed in this game if you'll never be XCal. And I would go over like gun stats, you know, shotgun, for example, like, yeah, you got to control the engagement. So if you have a shotgun, the fucking guy. You you're doing the recoil around. pattern on the wall. You, yeah, I do the re <laughs> I did a lot of videos with recoil patterns on the wall. Or like I'd play with a shotgun and do well. Why? Well, don't fucking run across the field with a shotgun. You're virtually unarmed. You exist indoors. You exist, you know, you take longer paths where you can keep all the engagements You got the, the heat maps close. of the level. You're like, you wear a shotgun, you <laughs> want to be here or here. Mm -hmm. That's where the most traffic's coming by. Yeah, so that, you know, Scorpion, for example, that gun was lethal, but oh only God, up to like yeah. 10 feet away. So mm -hmm. you felt unarmed if the guy's, you know, on the other side of the yard, but if he's in the same room as you, you're, you're a monster. So you have to make sure all your engagements are pretty much bad breath range. Mm -hmm. so. did, did you watch Only Using Me Blade back then? Yeah, yeah. That, he was the master at making sure he got the kind of fights that he wanted to, right? He just yeah. stealthy get up, touch somebody. <laughs> Did you ever ever watch that guy Ghost of Caldera when uh that was like a war zone? It's just a, a guy who does war zone. Uh-huh. But he does the knife thing only, but in war zone, which is just way more way crazier. Big maps. Yeah. I also assume those guys like because now I know way too much about skill based matchmaking and all that bullshit reverse boosting. People mm -hmm. doing what they can to get into lobbies with shittier players. Mm -hmm. Um like this whole element of of behind the 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 thin veil of gaming and matchmaking and lobby systems, knowing that some people game the system way more. Um, I was yeah. hearing that in in China, cheating is way more common. Is like it? when when there's cheating in games, it's way more common in China because in uh, and someone was saying uh, when i say someone i'm gonna talk about this like it's a fucking real piece of research <laughs> when it's just a reddit comment uh, someone, but it made a lot of sense to me someone uh, they were like in china it's you have there's so much comp competition for everything that getting whatever edge you can over the competition is totally understandable and sometimes it's loopholes or whatever and i guess when it's like something like low stakes as gaming you know like yeah, sure. Cheat. Beat these guys. I hear you. I, yeah, I always, I never did that. I never Me did either. that kind never. of thing. Like, um, never, ever. I knew another YouTuber. I, I don't remember his name, but he was a friend of Only Use Me Blade. In Call of Duty 4. His name's <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, he was a younger guy. Anyway, what he would do is he would upload a video while he was searching for lobbies. And the game would be like, fuck it. We can't find anyone who has a good ping to you. So you'll be host. And then he'd cancel the upload and he'd mm. get host of every game, which was a really big deal. It's a huge advantage. I wouldn't even leave games. Like I'd be getting my ass kicked. I'd be like, Never. whatever, 15 Same. and 15. I would finish that shit out and try to try to win with my team. Do and you get mad at games? Sometimes. Yeah. But um now I just think about it. Like, I think not that I was ever some pro gamer, and I don't pretend to be, but I think I was underestimated a little bit. Because I didn't do the thing where I would just like quit out of 50 games in a night to get the magic one. And they're comparing me who uploaded some 30 and 4 game to some other guy who uploaded a 50 and 2 game and say, that guy's way better. It's like, no, first of all, that guy didn't capture a single fucking flag all game long. And <laughs> second, <laughs> that guy who's 50 and 2, you know, you don't know his win loss ratio was like 0. 0.14. He loses every game because he quits as soon as he f starts off like six and one. He's like six and one. This is bullshit. I'm leaving. Start over until I can begin a game with a chopper.
back then on YouTube, people would start their Call of Duty match and they would start talking and recording while playing. And if they either flubbed words or messed up what they were saying or didn't get the kills they want, they would do another take. <laughs> and they might sit there and do like 15 games in a day until they have the one take that they like of the game. So it's uploaded looks like casually. They're just killing it and talking <laughs> to you. But there's other games that were were fucked, you know? Um, No, I don't. Uh, I, I mean, like, I never get mad at games because a long time ago I like broke a controller um, on Sega and my second controller was like a shitty one mm -hmm. and it wasn't the Sega one. So now I was using that controller and my parents were like, we're not buying you a controller. You broke it. And I was just like, okay, I'll never do that again. And then as time went on, I watched gamers, some gamers who are like friends of mine and they'll get very angry at the game. And I see that and I'm like, I would not do this if it made me how you're acting now. The whole point of this is to chill. And if I'm getting, even when I'm competitive and I'm like, oh, fuck, that's what I'll do. That's me going, oh, fuck. Or yeah. Like, no. Uh, and like, that's it. And, and and when the new Call of Duty came out, there were times where I'd be like, fuck. And you had that second and I forgot that it has that second of broadcast. Look, like, fuck. And I'm like, no, now they know I'm gay. <laughs> Dude, is that I'm why you totally buy so many controllers you. to protect, just to, to know that you have, because you do have an abnormal amount of controllers. And I like I to collect. Like you're collecting them in, and in your mind, like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I could, if I wanted to, I don't have to. I have uh, controllers for multiple Xboxes and I, I use a controller on my PCs. So two PCs, uh, two Xbox ones, a Series X, a Series S. And then you want to have multiple controllers. You that's how, that's how you control. That's how you control yourself is by yeah. having lots of controllers because you know and you could if you really wanted to. Like you could smash. I think it should TV. go the other way. If he has controllers, no, in, he's, he's doing the, the logic. Psycho. He's, he's doing the logic. Like if you're a cokehead, you can keep <laughs> yeah. coke in your house hidden. So that you're like, I know I have cocaine. I don't need to do it. I will always have cocaine right there. That is it's good. That's <laughs> it is. Yeah, so but people think like that. People, that's that is when the way I of thinking. first started streaming Tarkov. And I was killed. I would throw this like minor league temper tantrum, like ah fuck, like, can you believe it? That guy sucks or whatever. And in my head, I thought people watching it would be like, oh shit, I guess this guy doesn't die much if he takes it so poorly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love that. that. <laughs> and I like, love oh, that. I'm gonna think I'm good because I really hate dying. <laughs> and then I watched Anton. Uh, he's a popular yeah, Escape from Tarkov streamer, and. He just laughs, takes it in stride. And I was like, that is a way better look than I have. So I just copied that. Because sometimes people getting angry uh, is triggering. Like you might be 20 years older than someone watching. And this is now reminding them of their abusive dad. You're angry where you shouldn't be. Oh, and shit. this is like ringing a bell for them that they don't want rung. I shared something on Facebook once I thought was very funny. It was like, uh, it? it was these... These parents like ripping into their kid because he he used he had took some Diet Coke from the fridge or whatever, but he didn't put any back in. And they're like, you didn't replenish. You emptied the Diet Coke and you didn't replenish. You have to replenish. And they're calling up like they called up like uh, his mom. That guy's a question. If you finish all the, the soda in the fridge, what do you need to do? And someone on the phone was like, you got to replenish. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you got to replenish. You got to replenish. And they're like yelling at him. It's all jovial and fun. He's like, fuck you guys. I'm fucking out of here. And it's kind of similar to how my family is. I'm like, this is my family. And then someone who hit me up, who I, is someone that I know who totally does not have a family like this. He was like, this is was very bothersome for me to watch this. Is this really how your family is? And I'm like, yes, but I think you're taking it wrong. It's fun and funny in our family. He's like, this is like, sounds like a fight in my family. And I was huh. like, hmm. so like even cursing at a game, like, what the fuck? This fucking guy, they're like, oh my God, it's daddy in the car. It's daddy <laughs> in the car. <laughs> I was yeah. just like, if it makes me mad, I don't want to do it. And Lynch, you golf. You must have people who are golfing and are getting fucking pissed. Yeah, you guys well, are going, supposed to be chill day. <laughs> you guys are going through this whole conversation. I can't really relate to um, everything you're saying because I didn't approach video games like that or no, but golf. Deep in, but golf is exactly that where. You're saying like you can cheat, like cheating is a very common thing. When you talk about the cheating, I'm like, yes, I know. I was all I was thinking about is the few friends I have that are like uh, cheating. They turn off. in their score because they give their own score. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, and then you're like, I'm like, okay, sure, buddy. Like they're telling me what they got. I'm like, write it down. I'm like, all right, add, add two strokes to that one. Uh, liar, <laughs> you know, or they yeah. move the ball to a better spot. I'm like, okay, sure. Um, but like, I 
have golf is definitely a rage quit vibe um without a doubt <laughs> people Dude. And, and i've been around i've seen a guy essentially get assaulted on a golf course uh inadvertently because uh he hit a really good shot but it was five yards to the right and he literally took his club and he's like i can't fucking believe this shit and threw his club behind him and it's a uh, golf club's essentially like a weapon you titanium know? stick yeah and, and, and if you're a good golfer you get like the really thin full metal ones that are like uh, essentially like a blade you know a bladed club and he hit the he hit the guy in the golf court and cut open his arm and i was what? like shit i was like damn oh, and damn. it is a it is the worst i'd be so fucking mad at that point well and I'm like, what are you, he, he stupid, left. He just, you he, old fucking moron? He, he, we're he fucking left. golfing here, bro. We're all high on hash. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you chill? <laughs> we're like funny. skipping work. We've all we're all skipping work because we're rich and white. <laughs> Can you just be fucking happy about it? Well, that's it. I don't get it. I don't get it because to me, golfing, like, yeah, you can be irritated. Nah, that's because you're the big dog out big, there, yeah, eh? Driving true. at 300 yards. That's true, yeah. But it is. Are no, you but, the big you know, dog? Golf is. Uh, golf yes, can and he be got, like, golfs with older guys and they all call them, they all call them tiger <laughs> no, or sport. No, no, no. no. It's, it's, it's one of those things where like you, 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 it, golf is very irritating because it's like, it's a game of um, mm -hmm. like you're, it's, you're going to hit bad shots no matter what you do, no matter how good you are, even the best of the best. It's, it's just not, it's very hard to master. And so, Dude. Yeah. I have this parallel. So did, I enjoy paragliding, right? You know what this is with the fabric wing, mm -hmm. you jump off the mountain. Okay. Yeah. It's a very crazy thing to do. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> um, you mentioned about, I was going to say, you mentioned like five things and I'm, I'm, you're like an international <laughs> man of mystery a little bit here. It's like uh, <laughs> surfing randomly. And I'm like, okay, I, don't, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I'm just, I got a lot. I got to make a mental checklist of all the things you've mentioned so far. <laughs> so the way that paragliding works is the, the sun doesn't heat the air. You'd think it would. You'd think the sun hits the air and makes it warm, but it doesn't. The sun heats the earth and the earth heats the air. So now you have all the warm air at the bottom and it rises. They're called thermals and they're like really mild, invisible tornadoes, right? Just slowly cones of rotating air on its way up. Your job as a paraglider is to seek out these thermals and go from one rising cone of air to the next one. So you sort of glide down, go in circles till you go up, glide down to the next one. You following? Yeah. Yes. All right. I didn't even so, know it was that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that, but yeah. I'm. Inter I'm more yeah. fascinated than ever now. Really so here's where this comes into golfing. You jump off the mountain and you only have a good day if it's the best you've ever done. If you don't break a record, it was kind of a failure. Like, oh, did you stay up for two hours? Well, fuck. One time I stayed up for three. Did you go 50 miles? Eh, it's okay, but my record was 52 miles and I fell short again. Mm -hmm. And you either have the best day you've ever had or you missed it. Those are, those are the two things that can go down. Even if it's a good day, I, I, I once did better. And you'd think that would suck, but it's incredibly addicting. I also sure. do paramotoring. Now, paramotoring is the same sort of thing, except you have a propeller except on your back. Except you do it over a wall into a music festival. <laughs> yeah. So you have a, have a propeller on your back, and I just launch from my front yard. Every time I fly, I launch exactly where I meant to. I land exactly where I meant to. I flew for as long as I chose to. And it gets boring. You, all you do is win in paramotoring. And in paragliding, all I do is lose. And if you gave me a choice, which one I do this afternoon, I'd pick gliding because it's it's addicting. It's it, you're chasing that, that brass chase. ring. When you get it right, when you get it right, it just like it's like hitting the perfect, you hit a perfect shot exactly where you met your exact intention. It, it went where you want it to go. It listened to you, the ball. You're Much like, harder Damn. on yourself than I am on me, Woody. <laughs> Um, I try. You're me. out there. You're like, <laughs> I was looking like, motors. I'd like to do this for ten hours. You're like, ah oh, man, I went for two, but my best is three. If someone was like, yo, did you have fun today? I'd be like, yeah, dude, I fucking hung onto the thing, went out there, did some shit that you two were fucking scared to do, bitch. Of course, I had a great time. What were you doing down here, thumbing your ass, thinking about me fucking catching all the thermals? Pussy. Even if I'm up there for five minutes, I'm up there infinitely longer than your entire family tree has ever been up there. So don't ask me shit. <laughs> but, but, uh, just to close loop on the golf thing, where you're right is that like people do ruin it by being so angry. Like the anger you see out there is crazy. It's like rage quitting, probably like on steroids because they're just throwing clubs. Like you're you're out in the open, so you can. They're also kind of they're also want. like a rich boss. <laughs> Dude, hey. person who's competitive, hard on himself, is always trying, has ambition. So, like, that's the type of person that gets to golf in general is the person that's, like, into that shit. 
And so now you just getting you're wrong. Them you're at, gatekeeping at a little too much there. You're gatekeeping a little too much. It's golf is for everyone. We don't want to, you know, golf is an expensive sport. It's and like, and the ability to go play at places isn't as expensive. It's for as anyone think. who has a lot of money and free time, Harley. <laughs> is there what? They're, they're all they're inclusive to anyone who has money. Yeah, and exactly. Free time. It's yeah. Uh, listen. <laughs> I, I golf with no money. I, it's 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 a pursuit of. Um, I call it. It's therapeutic, and that's why I don't like when people get mad. Because truthfully, when you're out so you there, you hear about the fights on the course. That's why these rich dudes yeah. like to bring Lynch around in that case there's true, a fucking yeah. fight on the course. They're How like, many we got stitches some... did that therapy patient need? Uh, <laughs> at no. the end of his golfing <laughs> session. No, listen, it's 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 actually cheaper than therapy to go play golf. And how could you be mad? You're just hanging out outdoors for four hours with your boys. You know. Maybe smoking a cigar, grabbing some food at the at the halfway house. Like the, I don't understand. Talking about broads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Talking about our our next purchase, our next Beamer, we're gonna get. You know, have you whatever, ever gone yeah. gone golfing, Woody, or or to the driving range or anything? Driving range, yeah, that's yeah. fun. I've done that a couple times. I, wanna... I was terrible. I so when I went to the driving range, I was young and I was pretty athletic when I was younger, and I thought. I would take to golfing kind of quickly, right? Because I took to other sports kind of quickly. That's what I thought too, by the way, yeah. I was awful. Not only was I awful, and my friend, who was like real athletic, was just kicking my ass at the driving range. Fat old people were kicking my ass. Oh, and it was yeah. just like I, so humbling. I had nothing to offer. Old people out there keep their back in order so that they can keep golfing. I don't like, I sports. know there's old dudes out there that like would not mess up their back because they're like, I need this for golf. I stop, I My stop brother. playing sports. I don't play any sports. I stop. I, I don't play. I used to play a lot of basketball. I used to play, mm-hmm. I used to play tennis. I stopped everything just to not compromise my ability to play golf. And especially in Canada, your window is so small. You have summer and like a little bit of the, the edge of the other seasons. And then that's it. It's winter. So you're pretty much fucked. And, you don't uh, golf when it's negative fifty nine. Nah, so it's wind chill. <laughs> no, the only so place you can golf is Vancouver. <laughs> that's it, and all year, and even there, it's rainy. You know, so uh, I, I refuse to compromise my at this advanced age, my knees or any part of my body that will impact my ability to get out on the golf course and have a good time because it, it's just not worth it anymore. You know, uh, yeah. I may regret that though down the line because eventually I won't. Be, I wouldn't actually physically be able to play basketball without I don't know, blowing my knee out immediately or something like that. Um, I like basketball. I'm awful at it. I'm not built for it. Mm-hmm. I had a brief passion for it. I was never good. I'm, I'm really what better suited for cheering people on. Like, <laughs> I'm bad. I'm bad at basketball. Granted that I am You're built like for it to an extent. Foot. Yeah, yeah. So if I factor that in my size, like I am very bad at basketball. Mm-hmm. Rich played basketball for a while. Yeah, I was good at baseball and basketball. Uh, those were baseball was my best best sport, but I was I was good at basketball and. Like you, what he said, like that's what golf was to me when I was like, I was good at every, I have good hand-eye coordination. I'm like, I can do any sport, uh, mm-hmm. uh, no problem. And I can hit the ball far, but being able to hit the ball consistently straight, I was like, this is the most frustrating thing ever. Let me do it all the time now so I can be better than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I So I have double vision and uh, okay, like I'm okay. good at athletics in some ways. Like I, I, I swam really well. I'm good at paragliding and whatever surfing i was really good at but throwing and catching a ball dude not in the wheelhouse put me back on the swim team <laughs> i'm terrible uh, well I'm, i played t-ball i've talked about this on my own podcast and uh it was so bad i used to strike out in t-ball and and i kind of put it on my coaches a little bit like you know you know striking out right t-ball right? that's you a tough one. one of these dies and hit it yeah. I would face the pitcher straight oh, no. ahead. That was about Bautista like stance. Uh, <laughs> Fully open stance. Yeah, that Bautista. is on your. Co- I mean, now you grow up and that you see that you were you can take to sports or take to coordinated activities. You're like, oh, you fucking motherfucker! You didn't teach me. Yeah, you didn't give me what I need. That's like I have a uh, like a uh, uh, one of our other buddies who's uh, another host on the show. He's not here. Um, this guy Donnie. That's a guy who's very smart. And fucked up all through school. And like he's a smart guy and he's doing. And I, I always look back on that and I'm like, oh, you know, being a teacher, he just never had a good one. It really could take one good teacher to get you focused on being like not a full fuck up, you know, or at least handling some things. And he never came across it. And I think the problem was 
Uh, ultimately, I think he knew in his heart that he was smarter than a lot of the teachers that were trying to reach out to him, like naturally, like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, maybe he was like a thought he was like, like fancied himself a quicker thinker or whatever. You know, you know how it is. Eight is 15 to, to 30 <laughs> as a, a guy. You're like, I know everything. <laughs> we like, I got it figured out. Yeah, I was because my mom. Mm. Like I came home like there, there was no there was no trouble that I feared more than my mom. And it was because she was like a relentless, like if if it was like, if I fucked up something or I did something wrong, she's going to lecture me about it mm -hmm. all night mm -hmm. and all day tomorrow. And there's never going to be a break. There's never going to be a break in it. It's going to be like endless. Like it's like, and then you fucking this. It's the fucking Xbox because he's that. <laughs> And, is this? and what about the friends? <laughs> Always these friends, and it smells like weed in the house. And you don't think we've? I read, I read the article about kids. These and this <laughs> fucking shows that that's it, that's it. No more satellite TV. Turn it on, and it's, and you're just like, I'm just like. Uh. So I avoided trouble. I was like, no, dude, I gotta get home, and I gotta do my fucking homework. And they're like, why? And I'm like, cause my mommy, you <laughs> fucking pussy. Now, let me go do that. And like, I literally was at home. Mom was like, dude, the home. And my mom was like, she cared. She would like hit up teachers and be like, uh, my son's kind of retarded in a weird way. Um, he'll do his best to write down the homework. But uh, and she's scamming a bit here. She's like, tell me everything. I want to see his his syllabus. She'd have this like so she'd hit me up. She'd be like, you have a book report in two weeks. I'm like, what? who the fuck told you that? She's like, you've known about this for months. <laughs> And it didn't help that I was the type of kid who could really like do the book report the night before. You see? So I always did that. And I think that's what made me do YouTube as a job was I'd finish an epic meal and be like, okay, now next week's epic meal. Let's do it. Hurry. And then I'm like uploading that midnight the next week. And I'm like, okay, next week, let's do it. It was always like a last minute thing, you know? I wonder what I would have been like had I had your mom. I was a terrible student. Awful. I, I, I've never met anyone who had a lower GPA who finished high school than me. I graduated high school with a 1.98 okay. GPA. And uh, I wasn't I wasn't meant to be a moron. Like, I don't think I'm genetically an idiot. I worked at it. I would never do my work. I would never do my homework. Did you if bring I, supplies to, to your class? Did you have your uh, proper mm -hmm. tools? You had your pen and pencil with it you? It was kind stuff? of a secret how bad a student I was. Like, you wouldn't know. I dressed in a preppy way. And, you know, I didn't speak like an idiot, but my grades were those of an idiot. And I would, you would never, get home and you didn't want to do homework. You didn't want to do I the, the work. Or? Never do it. And, and in some cases, I really feel like it would have been easier to just do the work. Like, it's not that hard to do OK in high school. Definitely. But I would go out of my way to like and just suffer all these consequences from yeah. doing so poorly. But I never really put together like the pain pleasure balance on my slacking. And, you know, I the pleasure that I got from not doing homework did not outweigh the pain I got from it. And it's, it was rough. I would like the times where I'd be like, Oh, you know, now it's like university. I'm, I don't, I don't even have my mom. She's not going to fucking tell me to do shit. So I'm like, fuck it. I have a thing due tomorrow. I'm, I want to get high. I'd go out. I'd get high. As soon as I'm high, I'd be like, Oh my God, I got a thing due tomorrow. What the fuck am I doing here? And then I'd go home and start doing it stoned and slow. <laughs> yeah, I, was, see, I was just thinking about this exact thing because I, the one thing that I, I was always a, like, like hard, like I could get, I could do well, you know, relatively easily. I didn't, you know, I wasn't a bad student. I wasn't like the, studying all day either. You know, I was kind of, mm -hmm. but when I went to university, like my one regret is that I approached, I took a very like pragmatic thing. I did commerce, you know, I did something that I'm like, oh, this is, I'm going to spend money on university. I'm going to do what it's going to allow me to work in the future, you know? Um, but what I regret is I have lots of interest. I read like read a lot of books. There's lots of things I get into. I like history. There's something I could have, I didn't take advantage of that time. I took whatever was the easiest elective I could possibly take in that moment. I didn't, I, I didn't pursue my interests outside yeah. of like my core studies and that is like somewhere i'm like that was a big mistake i'm like yep. i could have done something cool that i enjoyed and learned about it and i read books about them anyways like i'm already doing stuff in my free time like outside of that reading about whatever it may be you know i just fucked that up that's a big fuck up mm -hmm. uh, in general you know i did make that mistake did that. but it was a mistake nonetheless so so here's the story i'm going for a master's i have a master's in engineering and mm -hmm. uh you get all your prerequisites done first because the problem is 
you don't want your the course you really need to not be offered. Yeah, so the right, stuff right. that you really need to take first, and by the time you're at the end of your degree, not only am I burnt out from like being a computer programmer all day and studying engineering at night, but uh, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, I'm burnt out and I want to try something different that will be fun. So I'm looking at the courses. I can take anything, any master's level course. And I'm like, highway safety? Maybe, maybe, <laughs> you know, like yeah. looking at something else, like oh, I can take this, this, and I find mechatronics. Mechatronics is building robots. And my idea what this course is going to be is like, you go to Walmart, buy some robot parts and program for them, which I was sure I could do. And then you make anyway, a fight. Dude, that was not what mechatronics was <laughs> at all. It was like electrical engineering, which I didn't know shit about. Mechatronics is like the study of money in the city of Mecca. <laughs> no, it's building robots. <laughs> but like we were doing, I, I, my calculus was not good enough at the time. So we're doing like first and second order differential equations. Are you familiar with these? Yeah. No. Well, so, so, I don't know. I got like, a B plus in calculus, but that's the furthest I went in calculus too. If, if you wanted to model how a thermometer like raises, it's like the mercury expands and finds its like temperature, that would be mm -hmm. a, a first order differential equation. And, you know, you put it in your your boiling water and it kind of goes up really quickly at first. And then as it goes those last couple degrees, it's a little more slow. And the second one would be like putting a weight on the end of a spring and dropping it to where it like, you know, sort of bat goes up and down until it finds its point. So I'm here thinking I'm going to like do cool robot shit. And they've got me designing like a tractor seat such that you can bounce but not bottom out or something. And I Major got my key. ass yeah kicked by this class i tried so hard i worked at cisco so there were like electrical engineers and mechanical engineers and shit like that that i could tap into so i'm like going to other people's That's cubes useful. and begging them to help me with my homework and to teach me i'm teaching myself calculus i'm buying books like for college kids that and i'm supposed to be a master's who already knows this picking up new hobbies at the master's level is a terrible idea <laughs> <laughs> i was lucky yeah. to get by yeah. yeah that's that that makes a lot of sense <laughs> Well, yeah. listen, uh, Woody. I thank you so much for coming on. You do. I am serious. You do owe me like fifteen more, but spaced over the span of eight years, I guess is fine. Roger that. Do that. No, but, right. uh, it was great having you and great speaking to you outside of PKA. Oh yeah, I got your number now. I'm fucking. Who gave maybe you I'll just, my number? Never telling. But Lynch, <laughs> give this guy a couple show recommendations real quick. Uh, before he goes give him a couple of <laughs> I don't, you got anything for him off the dome i haven't i don't really have anything the curse i don't know that might be that might be tough Oof. okay yeah the curse huh yeah it's gonna hurt your feelings and yeah. woody everyone's gonna check you out on pk where else should they go what else uh where do you want the people to to go oh, to just to? swing by harley's house i'm there all the time oh uh, yeah he is sucking me off <laughs> me and him splitting a lady boy <laughs> uh, we could both of us could i can't split a lady boy myself but we could split in half me and woody anyways that's mm -hmm. enough of that uh thanks guys for listening uh leave a rating a comment whatever big lynch holding it down and peace y'all thanks for having me